Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and in this video, I will be going through our FDA nozzle and using ANSYS expressions to improve the fidelity and setup of the simulation. Uh, the first thing I want to do is take a look at the mesh. We're interested in the wake structure in this straight section of the pipe, so I can refine that area by adding a face sizing. We'll go with five, uh, half a millimeter. You can assign mesh sizing to any geometric feature from bodies, faces, and edges. If we wanted to resolve interior areas specifically, we can slice up the geometry and select those bodies to refine the mesh. So the meshing is done. You can see that the area around the straight cylinder here is very nicely refined. Next, let's go ahead and set up the physics. One of the challenges in our previous simulation was that we had to extend the inlet nozzle pipe long enough so that the flow properly develops into a fully developed flow. This is cumbersome because we end up with a very long, unnecessary, unnecessary piece of pipe. Here we're going to use ANSYS expressions to define the profile for a fully developed flow. You can go online, you can go online and find the equations for a fully developed pipe flow. It looks like something like this, where the velocity as a function of radius is the two times the average velocity, and then some function of the radius and the total uh, radius of the pipe. So I have all the information here. We have we know the area, we know the flow rate. From that, we can calculate the average velocity, and we have the radius of the pipe itself. So let's go ahead and implement this equation in our simulation. So we're going to go, into, go to inlet. Instead of mass flow rate, where we use an expression to calculate it, I'm going to define a flow velocity. And we're going to define the flow velocity as a function of the directional components. So the x and y directions of the velocity will be zero. And the z direction is our equation. So we can use two times the velocity, which is zero point, the average velocity, 3.2223. Meters per second times one minus the square, the radius squared divided by the total radius squared. So the radius is position x squared plus the position y squared. And so that's the square of the radius divided by the total radius, which is 6 millimeters squared. So that's an expression we can use to define the z direction of the velocity. We need to use a double multiply sign to define squared. So once the answer reads in this information, uh, it'll calculate a positional dependent uh, velocity on the inlet. So that allows us, us to shorten the pipe significantly uh, to get a more accurate result. The next step we can do is change the material. Right now material is a, a Newtonian blood. We have a constant viscosity. We're going to use a blood is obviously non-Newtonian. It's a shear thinning fluid in that as it flows, the higher the shear, the lower the viscosity. So we can implement, implement one of our shear thinning viscosity models. We can look into help. In essence, if we type in uh, non-Newtonian models, we have a list of non-Newtonian models implemented in our other CFD packages. In this case, CFX has a list of different non-Newtonian methods, uh, Bingham, Word, Karu. Uh, the one that's often used for blood is this Kaysan model. Kaysan model defines the square root of the viscosity as a function of the yield stress the shear strain rate, as well as this uh, viscosity consistency, which is kind of the, the average viscosity of the material. So we can, let's implement this model instead of having a constant viscosity. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get both parts on the screen here. All right. 
So our viscosity is the square root. No. Well, we will square both sides. So let's go ahead and start with this side here. So we have uh, 20 millipascals. This is the, the yield stress divided by the strain rate. And we want to take the square root of this value and add to it our square root of the viscous consistency, which can also be called the uh, apparent viscosity. So this is 3.5. Oops. So this is 3.5 centipodes and we want to square this whole thing to the power of two the challenge here is that if the strain rate is very small initially it may be zero or very low strain rate uh, this value can become very large, so we need to set some limits to this. So we're going to set a limit to this equation. Uh, we're going to limit the maximum, so we're going to pick the minimum value of either the, the nonlinear Kaysong equation for viscosity or 5.5 uh, centipodes as our other maximum. This can be determine through experimental values you can change this as needed but the key is to keep it from going to infinity uh, when you have a very low strain rate so that now turns my material into blood non-Newtonian uh, let's just check to make sure this is uh, specified here so material assignment blood non-Newtonian and we have a non non Newtonian model defined. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the simulation now. Okay, the simulation completed after about 84 iterations. Let's take a look at the results. So I'm going to start by taking a cross-sectional plane view of the velocity. So I'm going to create a plane. Add a velocity plot. Okay, so this velocity plot shows what, you, what we expect in terms of a high speed region here uh, through the nozzle. Because we made the material non Newtonian, we can take a look at the viscosity changes. So here is the dynamic viscosity. You can see that in areas of high shear near the wall. We have low vis vis viscosity, showing that we're capturing the thin shining behavior of, of blood. And then in areas with low, vis low shear, we have high viscosity. We've got maximum values of viscosity, our maximum value, and this is the minimum value, which is near what we specified in the other model. Uh, we can also take a look at the wall shear stress or fluid shear is a strain rate. You can type in the value here directly. And it's, it'll be made more apparent if we change the color distribution to a log logarithmic plot. So this is showing you the strain rate of the liquid blood in this case as it flows through the nozzle. Just like the previous uh, analysis, we're going to compare our results to experimental data, creating a line chart here. Starting point, uh, we have a new starting point based on the geometry of this location. And our end point, create a new one as well. Again, based on the geometry. Going back to the result here, line chart, and we want to look at the velocity magnitude along this model. Okay. 
Okay, to ex compare this to experimental data, we need to export this as a CSV file. This is our new data. We're going to displace it by 10 centimeters. Like this. And we're going to paste this to the rest of the data. Copy this over to our sheet with the with the test data. So this is the test data. This is our current data here. I'm going to insert a line plot. So that's the simulation result. And let's add in the test result to see how similar they are. Okay. So you can see that the agreement is quite nice here. Because we used fully developed pipe flow, the velocity here matches up very nicely. It's still there's a slight difference at the out uh, in the outlet section, uh, but that could be due to experimental error. And we have many sets of data, so we can compare to all of them to get a feel for what the error range is for the uh, outlet. But overall, it's quite good agreement, showing you that by using expressions, we can get good accurate prediction of pipe flow by inputting the proper pro velocity profile and by using by turning on but also by using expressions uh, we can also we can also get good results by turning on the shear, th shear thinning nature of blood to get more accurate plot of um, of the material properties. Here we go. So again, this is a non-Newtonian model of the blood in the FDA validation example for a nozzle. And this is, should be very helpful for companies developing um, biomedical devices that deals with blood. Thank you.